today's blog we are going to cover one very specific but very important topic called tools and function callings now if you head out to olalama website you will also find a blog this blog also provides some very useful tips on how to get started with tools and function callings now just to recap you'll find link to source code in video description below and if you're finding this video for the first time so that you know this is the fourth video in the jenny rag beginner series please consider watching previous videos for the background like you can find this video in highlight section in my x handle ashoklax and also you can find the same videos on my youtube channel now if you like this content please consider subscribing to my youtube channel and follow me at a github and x account so let's open your jupyter notebook and in this section as i stated earlier we are going to only cover the basics and fundamentals of tools and functional callings so first thing first you will need an olalama installer in your machine now in case if you're wondering where it's coming from please visit my x handle or go to my youtube account and you will find specific videos where i have discussed these things in details at this point, I assume that you already have Olalama installed. If not, just run pip install Olalama. All right. So now let's import it first. So import Olalama. And now I'm just going to define a generic function which accepts a prompt. And whatever prompt it accepts, it calls the Olalama chat function. So if you mouse over to this chat function, please take a minute to read the signature of the functions. So it's expecting a model, message, and couple of other parameters. So right now in this, for the beginners, we are only going to focus on two sections, say model. So we want to use Llama, uh, Llama 3.2 model and messages. So again, messages expect a JSON object. So one thing is role and other is the message content. So role, we'll just say it's an ordinary user and content. So whatever prompt, that means whatever question you want to ask to your LLM model, just pass it there. All right. So whatever your response, the Llama chat function results, um, we are going to store into a response object and let's go return a response message content. All right, so now we want to call this function. So let's take three different scenarios. So for example, we want to ask three different questions. Hey, tell me something about Los, Los Angeles, California. All right, let's run this. Depending on machine configuration, it may take some time. Now, once it finishes, as you can see, it returns some you know useful results. And as you can see, these results are very, very useful. Now, let's ask this another question. So we are going to comment this house, and I'm going to ask, how is the weather in Los Angeles, California today? Now, if you run this, you'll be you'll not be surprised by the results because it's saying as a large language model, I don't have access to real time information. So it's not able to answer that question. Now, this is the problem. This is the exact problem we are going to solve it using tools and function callings. So again, just to recap, because LLM models do not have access to real time information. Now read the chat signature. So there is something called tools. So tools has been recently introduced, which exactly solve this problem. Now, how to solve it? Just assume that if somehow, if we can pass say tools equals to current information, so for example, tools equals to tools, and we pass this information. So again, tools is a variable here. Let's go declare this variable. So for somehow, if we pass that real time information to this tools parameter, and we just hope that this will work fine. So what we are doing here, we are just tricking the Olalama chat by providing them an extra information which is retrieved through some current API or whatever method. So assuming that if we pass that information as a helper function, Olalama chat will be able to solve this problem and we will be able to provide the real time information. Now in a nutshell, if you think about it, that's all tools or function callings or assistant or agent is all about. So passing an extra information to help out your Olalama. All right, so we made it this far. So now let's go read the error one more time. So as you can see, it's just saying it cannot understand because you are passing a string and uh, uh, the olalama.chat function is expecting a sequence of tools. So now, as you can see, tools of tools and tools here we described as a variable as a string here. But if you read that tools equals to sequence of tool. So what we are going to let's go fix this thing. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this thing. Now let's go define tools. So now tools as you as you saw that that tools is a sequence so what is the sequence format look like so again this is if you go to the olalama tools api implementation you will find all this information here now as per api tools is nothing but a list of json variables here json objects here so uh, as so as you can see i have defined two different json objects and you will see the reason why i'm defining two now let's define the first tool here so first thing is what type of tool so type equals to function okay now type then you define the properties of the function so inside that function we are going to again define three different parameters here name description and parameters name 
description and parameters now within parameters we can define the further properties of the exact parameter like what kind of parameters you are trying to pass so inside the parameters you can say the type of the parameters it could be a string and the properties of the parameters and whether it's required or not again it looks like a little hard to understand but you know it's uh, it's very very simple once you get used to it you will understand it exactly what i'm talking about so here because we are asking the weather information so let's first name this so name of my function is get current weather simple okay and then let's go fill out the description so description um, and then just say you know what get the current weather for a particular city this is the name of the function that we are going to do type equals to say object and city now city is the parameter so because we are getting the weather of a city city is the parameter we are going to runtime parameter we are going to pass okay now again you give the type and uh, type of the city variable is a string and description equals to name of the city required equals to you know that, that means the city parameters are required now again just to get used to this one that's the reason we define the two differentiation parameters here let's copy this thing and let's go paste to the second one because i just want to practice creating one more such function so that get used to it all right so and most of the time you will see the tools function signatures remains the same all right so let's go same thing let's copy this thing here and 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 again because as i said tools is a sequence of different functions so you can define as many tools as you want okay now let's go now because you know see this is the reason because we want to ask another question and i want to show you an example saying hey tell me the age of that employee so uh, some user information so let's go call this function say get user and uh, let's give this function a name or the description of the function is i want to get the current age of an employee now instead of city the variable will be employee now let's go change the description and the required field here so employee let me copy paste it here the name of the employee all right so so far what we have done just to recap we have created two different tool functions which are totally irrelevant one is talking about the weather other is talking about the employee information now let's run this and create this tools object all right so you might be wondering these are two different functions and you know how come you know olalama decide which one to run and we'll see that like you know how that happens here all right just to recap one more time we have created two different uh, functions inside the tool sequence so now let's go define that tools equals to tools here so hopefully once you have created your sequence of tools now it will understand you know what we're talking about now since we just defined two different functions in, in these tools now we have to create those functions so let's go define a function which get the current weather and let's define another function which gets the user information let's say get user let's leave it blank here and i'm going to cut it in a and paste it in a separate cell so let's go code all right cut it out put it in the second window here all right so in this get current weather what it does it simply retrieves it simply calls an api so let's go uh, import our request library here and simply i'm going to pass the city as a parameter what this api does if you pass the city name or the language you are latitude latitude it retrieves the information from the uh, uh, weather.gov api let's define the url here all right now as you see i have hard coded the values here ideally you want to pass it as a runtime parameter here but less doesn't matter it could be because we are just mimicking the behavior the point is we are going to show you that you are able to call an api here so this api returns a response object and if you look closely there's some properties you have to understand so for example properties uh, periods and the first value of the period and the forecast value of the temperature okay you will see that in a minute what i what i mean by that why i did like this okay so now let's go call this function and uh, I'm going to uncomment this, run this. So you will see it returns the current temperature of the Los Angeles um, here. Okay. Now you see if you want to know like why I did it like that, respond.json. Let me cut it out. So let me just go delete this thing, run this again one more time. So you will see the entire JSON objects returned by this API is in this format. So because you know, so you have to just like you know dig into that information, look into the properties, periods, and then you figure it out the temperature. So that's why I'm just accessing the properties uh, from this API result object. So all right. So now this is uh, and if you want to like so for example say second day forecast or third day forecast you can simply change the values here and it will return the value of the temperature of that particular day 
All right. So this is the function. Uh, so now my function is ready. What this function does, it simply tells you the current uh, temperature of that particular uh, city uh, on a given day. All right. Now let's go focus on the second function, get user. Now this is little different, uh, difficult. And intentionally I did it like this. I want to show you that you know how to connect to the database and you know how to get a real time value from a real time database. So I'm going to fast forward this code because I just copy pasted this code from the OpenAI chat GPT. So here simply I'm just connecting to a fake uh, database called example.db and here I'm creating a table. So that just to showcase that I already have that database uh, in the memory. So now let's go create some fake values here, Alice Vendor. Okay. Now retrieve the record, select a star from user and I'm going to print the number of the rows here close the connection less than this. so what it does simply what I did I created a fake database now the second function what I want to create what I want to actually use in my Olalama tools functions is going to access this database and get the values here so define get user and get user if you remember we pass a parameter say imply name so let's go back and I'm going to copy paste this because you know the select star everything else that remains the same except the create table part of it. So um, let me just copy paste and then I'm going to comment it out because we want to use the same database here. So connect, connection equals to SQLite 3 dot connect example dot db and I'm going to open a cursor. That means I'm going to open a connection and uh, let's define the function called get user. I'm going to copy paste. Actually, I don't need all of these things. I just need to run a simple query which is select star. So Okay, select a star from user and whatever the imply name is passed into the definition and I want to pass it as a random parameter and print the results. All right, so I think this looks very, very clean. So as you can see, uh, let me get rid of this one. I don't need this line. I don't need, uh, yeah, I need this one. So here I'm creating a connection and then once I have that connection to the SQL database here, simply I want to access this, which is saying select to start from the users and I'm going to pass like name equals to imply. Simple. So as you can see, this is a three or four line function here. So now, uh, and let's not forget to close the connection. It's always whenever you are working with any kind of database, whenever you open a connection, please do not forget to close it. So if you, if you see this, like now our second function is ready which accesses a real-time database and which returns some values based on some dynamic parameter here, okay? So now if you could have asked, say, hey, what is the age of Amit? So it could, you know, it will run a different runtime parameter. It will pass those values as a runtime parameter and it goes to the database and it's going to run the different query here. That's the whole point I want to show it to you. Now, just to recap at a very high level what we have done so far. So olalama.chat has a new parameter called tools now tools is nothing but a sequence is a sequence of the functions and each function can be totally irrelevant and can do the separate task. So function one, for example, could be an calling a weather API and function two could be an SQL. It could be anything. And these functions are able to accept the parameters. So that's what exactly what makes it so powerful here. Now, you know, if you understand this concept, like, you know, how tools are getting used and how functions are getting passed into the tools. Now remaining piece of puzzle is, how Chat knows which tools to call and when? An answer to this question is very, very simple. Now let's go back to our original function. To do that, simply what I'm going to do where I pass the tools equals to tools, I'm going to comment it out and I'm going to read it in again. Now here, as expected, is going to complain that, hey, you know what, I don't know about the real-time information, so I cannot answer that question. Now let's go look at the entire response object. So here, initially we were accessing the properties. Now let's go run this again. I want to see the entire response object, what it returns. And you'll be surprised to see the number, the, the so much useful information packed in into this small object here. So as you can see, usually we always, you know, we only want to see the results. So we always see res res response dot message dot content but here just take a look at the other things you know so for example done reason total duration from there are so much other information here and now I want you to pay attention to this something called done reason now let's go pass the tools equals to tools I'm going to uncomment this and rerun this and now once you rerun you will immediately see there is something called tool calls so as you can see now it's already into the role equals to assistant mode and tool calls it note exactly that I was it because you asked the question of an employee age it knows which function to call 
and not only that it was able to retrieve the runtime parameter so for example here it knows that you are asking about an employee named alice so this is the exact point i wanted to show it to you today now just to reiterate i'm going to print out couple of strings here again these are the different parameters of the same response object now let's run this so it will make more sense what you and you see the results so basically what is saying it's just a nicer way of you know formatting the same information here i'm saying the function was called what get user and the parameters and the argument was sent to that function imply name alice so this is exactly how you take advantage of the tools and function callings uh, using olalama this is exactly what i wanted to achieve in this video today i wanted to show you one very simple example of how tools and function calling works in olalama and the reason i wanted to do that because in later video when we are going to work on more sophisticated use cases and real time projects we are going to make an extensive use of these tools and function callings now in case if you are wondering like you know um, how to manage all these different agents and functions and tools and callings i wanted to show you that you can also use a library called swarm so if you go to this their documentation this is the library i highly recommend and once we in later part of the video once you are building more sophisticated ai agent kind of systems where you have too many functions to take care of that i highly recommend you please you know go please visit this library and we will be making use of this um, this to, uh, in later videos all right that's all i wanted to cover this video today i hope you liked it uh, and uh, please stay tuned for next set of videos thank you